here is a short clip of what we will be completing today and then we'll get into the video of the Linux application. First thing I'm going to add into this project is a folder called connection. This holds a class called init SQL connection, which returns an SQL connection. This class can be altered to return connections from different servers or different databases that can be used throughout the project. The next thing I'm going to add is a folder called view model. This holds our main window view model class and a class called VM face, which handles the I notify property change values. We can talk about this in another video. After that, I'm going to connect our view model to our view. Um, that is going to be initiating the view model inside of our view class and then tying it to the data context. And that is what actually ties the variables to the UI elements. For the next few minutes, I'm going to do some sped up programming. You can slow this down to 0.25 if you need it at real speed and we'll talk about what happens at the end of the video. Now that we've loaded in our observable collection that we will be pushing to our new table, let's set our load data value to zero and our load data max to the size of our collection, which we will be pushing. This just shows that our text blocks are correctly tied to those variables. Here's something I forgot to show. I changed the window startup location to center of the screen and this is how you change that. Now that we've got that all set, let's go back to our class and let's tie our button command to an actual action. So we're going to create a new relay command and this relay command is what we imported from our NVDM toolkit from the NuGet package manager. After that, we'll create our class and we're going to create a new function that inserts our values into our new table. And inside of this new function that we are creating is where we will actually be updating our load data value as we insert our records into the new table. Here we change this function to be async so we can do work in the background and also update the UI elements and have free range to be able to resize the page, move the page around and everything update and work properly at the same time. 
And this is a reminder that the observable collection, fake collection, is just representing some sort of data. This could be an Excel file, a text file, or wherever your data is coming from. But it's representing data that we would like to push to a location. Adding the word await here in front of our connection.openAsync is actually implementing the async functionality. Without the await word there, the async would not work properly. And we do this below inside of our for loop. Here inside of our for loop, first we want to clear our command parameters because we are doing this multiple times. Second, we want to add the value to our command parameters. And then third, we want to actually push this send value. After we push the value, this is where we want to update the load data value. And this is what will actually be updating the progress bar and moving the progress bar along as we push the data. As you see, as soon as we hit the button load data, our data starts pushing to our new SQL table. Our progress bar moves along appropriately and we are able to move the window around or resize the window or do whatever we need to and it does not disturb what is happening. Thank you for watching. If you have ideas for future videos, please comment below.